In this lesson, we'll learn about vertex map node and attribute node. This scene is from chaos.com and I have created an Octane version of it. Let's see what we have in this scene. If I come down to this flower zero one group, I have this remesh object that remeshes this flower zero one petals object. It was a heavy object and the remesh object reduces the intensity of the petals by like 70%. Then I have applied a vertex map tag from the other tags. If you right click on the object to this remesh object. Now, if I select the vertex map and play through the timeline, you can see what that vertex map does. It starts from the top corner. It grows and transitions the weight of the vertices from zero to 100%. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Octane for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 20 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Octane for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. For the vertex map, I'm using fields. It's a very simple setup. I have placed a spherical field at the top of the petals. Then there is a freeze modifier in the grow mode. Then I have masked the growth of the freeze with two random modifiers. The lower one uses a turbulence noise with a bigger scale. And then the other one is multiplied with the same turbulence noise type, but with a smaller scale. Also down in the fields, I have a disabled spherical field that can be used as a second setup. So if I disable the top corner spherical field and enable the center spherical field and play through the timeline, now the growth will be from the center of the petals. For now, let's enable the top corner spherical field and disable this one. And if I go to the basic tab of the vertex map, I have named this vertex map grow effects. Okay. Now we can use this vertex map as a mask in our octane shading networks. Consider it a procedural black and white texture. Now, in this case, I want to use this vertex map to transition between two materials. In the material manager, I have assigned this composite material named grow effects to the remesh object. Let's open it up in the node editor and start a render in the live viewer. In the composite material, I have created two materials. If I go to material two tab and zero out the mask, we can see the first material, which is this organic pink material. And for material two, if I set its mask amount back to one, it is a gold material. So we want to transition between the pink material to the gold material. To do that, we need to import the vertex map and there are two ways to do it. Let's try the first method. Right click in the work area and from the C4D shaders, add a vertex map node. In the vertex map node, we have this vertex map field to define the vertex map that we want to use. Let's link the grow effects vertex map from the scene here in the node. Now we can simply connect the vertex map node to the material to mask input. Now I can hide the node editor so we can see both the viewport and the live viewer. Let me select the vertex map in the object manager so we can see it in the viewport as well. Now, if I play for a dozen of frames and stop for a few seconds and move and stop, move and stop, uh, you can see how the vertex map translates into the material transition in the render. Maybe we can use the G key to go to the next frame and see the transition slowly. Now, the vertex map node is great, but because it uses linking, that link might break if you move the vertex map to another object or copy the object and its material to a new scene. The second way of using vertex map in the Octane node editor is through an attribute node. So right click and from the texture nodes, add an attribute node. 
The attribute node is used for generic extraction of named attribute data from vertex maps, regardless of the source. It can be a Cinema 4D native vertex map, maybe a Houdini Alembic export that imports some of the attributes as a vertex map and so on. Attribute node can also extract named attributes from X particles trail object. At the time being, it cannot read Cinema 4D's custom attributes that we can assign to an object in the object manager through the user data menu. Hopefully it will in the future. When we created the vertex map, it was named grow effects, if you remember, which basically means that the petals object has an attribute named grow effects assigned to it that transitions the weight of the vertices from zero to 100% gradually. Now to read that attribute, we can come over to the attribute node. We know the attribute we want to read here does not store color data. It just stores float values from 0 to 1 or 0% to 100%. So change the attribute type from color to float. And in the name field, simply type the name of the attribute that you want to load from the scene, which was called grow effects. And now simply connect the attribute node to the material to mask input instead of the vertex map node. Now if I move away the node editor and move through the timeline, we should get the exact same effect that we had with the vertex map node. But the advantage with the attribute node is that it just reads an attribute from the scene. So you can simply copy the object to another scene or copy the vertex map to another object. And as long as that vertex map with that exact name, which was grow effects exists, there should be no problem. Let me solo the attributes node so you can see how Octane sees it. Now if I just go through the timeline using this amazing stop and move trick of mine, you see it starts as a black map and grows or transitions into a white map. We can unsolo it. So in this lesson, we learned about vertex map node and attribute node. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Octane, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.